Hey, uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, up here in Michigan today. Uh, there's a just a, a note of interest. There's a huge hurricane at my Florida office where I would be, so I came up to the Michigan office, and I had to do this video. <laughs> I'm trying to do two a week. Um, one of the ones I get called on mostly and about. Oh, mm, side note. Uh, this. Uh, is being given as usual under the auspices of uh, entertainment, education, and informational uh, reasons, and hopefully it helps you to tighten the cap where your state is, and then you can apply the strength of your state laws and jurisdiction. I'm here to help, and just use my information the way, the way you want to, and a lot of free stuff on my website. Uh, but as always, you be you. So the one I get most calls on, either from other states that I can help in, or from the states that I, I can help in, is UHG1 LLC. Um, I, I think it's there's a larger... Uh, you've heard me say previously that there's a suing arm. For example, LVNV funding is a suing arm of Sherman Acquisitions or something much greater than that. It's, a, it's the suing arm that they send out to sue after all these companies and entities have transferred the debt and traded it here and there. UHG is a similar one, but with a twist. Remember twist. There's a company called, or an entity called United Holding Company that probably makes the purchases and then has the suing arm of UHG1, UHG2, all these UHG entities that when they first came on board at least when I first noticed the lawsuits I could see right off the bat they kind of didn't even know who they were either they just threw whatever they wanted to on a caption and most people go okay I guess because I know I took the debt out 10 years ago from somebody but they claim so I've since batted them enough where they're kind of not because of me but maybe many people change the way they sue, but with one one large deficit that they can't help. So who is UHG1 today, LLC, or UHG? They are who I think to term the head of the pretzel collectors. What the heck is a pretzel collector? Think about that term. They sue on charge-off deficiencies, credit cards, Mostly fintech accounts. Um, there's this AI funding. Start remembering AI funding and also think about securitization. They represent LendingTree and LendingCorp, which themselves are just a weird amount of entities. And WebBank is the biggest one you have to look for. WebBank is considered by, and, and I hear this in depositions, WebBank is this entity a computer that has you send them your personal information in through an application and then they hook you up with various entities as really the servicing arm of web bank or lending tree or lending corp and then you deal with something that is really just a servicing agent that when they sue you will say no that's the original creditor and UHG does that a lot. Um, here on the screen, I always go, Shazam is a lawsuit where UHG is claiming net credit, in this case, is the original creditor, but its own information and paperwork says it's somebody else. It's, uh, I'll tell you, I'm scrolling down. It is Republic Bank and Trust with the word creditor above it in the paperwork where they say net credit is the original credit in the caption. Why they do this, there's many reasons. The web and the umbrella of securitization twists the truth such that it, it the, the term stranger than fiction, <laughs> it, they don't know who they are, and then they plunk it on the debt collectors and say, go sue this person for this debt. And the debt collector can see that there's many arms of this 
many tentacles of who maybe owns the debt. So the one that we're looking at today, I'll put, I put on the screen showing you the caption with net credit claiming to be the original credit and they're not. It really makes debt collectors, mostly law firms that represent entities like this, UHG, twist and turn into pretzels because they have to say one thing is true, but really the other thing is true. For example, in this case, I immediately said, you don't even represent the right person as the creditor. And they said, well, yes and no. Yes, this guy that you claim is the original creditor is, but they quickly assigned it to who we consider the original creditor. And the law doesn't, but because they do, um, the twists and turns of a pretzel. I keep thinking of pretzel, and you'll see this as I go along. I, as a word on United Holding Group and UHG, the uh, CFPB has gone after them earlier last year for doing exactly what this case I'm showing you with the same entities is doing. So UHG, along with all these weird entities, I think one is JTM, uh, I'm scrolling down just so I can be a better uh, JTM management, capital management. There's, in this particular case I'm showing you, and I'll go back on the screen now with the caption with net credit of that case. If you look in my show notes, you'll see what they sent me as the owner of the debt. They claim in this case the original creditor was net credit hyphen bank hyphen partnership. So. The original creditor is um, this Republic Bank. Weltman Weinberg, in this case, as as with for UHG, is saying net credit is the original creditor. Their paperwork says net credit hyphen on the ground bank hyphen on the ground partnership is the original creditor. They also say the creditor is also net credit, which it isn't. And then they say in their own paperwork, it's a little blurb, I'll put it right in my show notes, JTM Capital Management LLC is the owner. It's a tangled web, it's pretzel logic, as Steely Dan titled one of its songs. But my point being is this securitization, which is exploding now, is leaving debt collectors in a quandary in that they have to claim things that aren't true for the end of their lawsuit to be somewhat non-fictional is the best way I can put that. And so there's a lot of honor in this, meaning they'll sue somebody, UHG, for a debt they clearly have screwed up and don't have or own. And then the person being sued says, well, I know I took a web bank loan, loan many moons ago. I guess I own it. They're banking on the people they sue kind of relenting and not asking questions. So I always laughingly call myself Brian Problem Parker. Just so happens my middle initial is P. But they cause their own problems. I just bring it to light. That's why you're here today. Use this information to bring this nonsense to light. More and more every day, I am convinced that none of these lawsuits of any collection kind have any validity. And if you look at my videos on securitization, you will see what I'm talking about. But on a debt buyer level, whether it's student loans or something crazy with this web bank funding, there's just no ownership of the people that sue you eventually. The whole thing is set up from the originator day one to be a, a mess that benefits several people making a lot of money before it gets to the lawsuit. And then they make extra money if you let them get away with it. So look at my show notes. They'll be at Podcast Plus in uh, CollectionStopper.com. And I'll do a section just on UHG. And you can see some sample lawsuits where they've claimed one thing and then their own documents claim another. I can't emphasize this enough. And I say this to you and please listen to me. Why not? Um, their own paperwork wins your case. You don't have to do any discovery really unless you're like me. I like to go ask some questions for six cases down the road. 
Remember, that's my other thing. Always be working on cases down the road. Always be working on the judge three cases down the road. You're building up a portfolio for yourself of a reputation if you are first starting to take these cases. But you're also doing the hard work now. That's why you lift those weights. So down the road, you can handle something. This is, I'm doing the heavy lifting for you here. Use this stuff. And remember, pretzel logic. The poor, poor, poor debt collector has to make these specious, specious, these weird arguments that are so far from the truth that their clients have twisted them in. Um, these are, to quote, UHG1, LLC and any derivative thereof. They bring crap cases with no ownership proof, but the ownership proof just helps you not only win the case, but then send it back and do a counterclaim. I'm always nice about it. I go, here's my answer. You can see where I'm going. Don't make me do a counterclaim because I'm going to seek my fees and costs. Rarely do they ever go, boy, you're smart. You're right, which they should because they've got this client that they don't want to lose. It's saying them millions of dollars in debt they can get a piece of. It's all about the money. It's also about the assignments, baby, because it is all about the assignments. Look at the dates of assignment. Look at the missing assignment. Keep in mind, again, a chain, it really is only as strong as its weakest link. And again, this is, <laughs> in this case that you have on the screen, let me put it back on the screen for you, um, you will see that there's at least six different owners that the law firm and UHG itself said really don't own the debt, even though their own paperwork says owner. <laughs> Sometimes it drives you crazy because you can see right there, it's right in front of you and they'll claim, no, what you're reading is not really true. And they'll say that to the court. Like I had an argument today, I won a really good motion this morning. And the person said, well, yeah, Mr. Parker's right. We don't have legal, this is seriously. She said, yeah, Mr. Parker's right. We don't have legal ownership, but we kind of do have equitable ownership, which there was no evidence of that. And the judge, bless him, said, there's no evidence of that. <laughs> Why wouldn't you attach it? And we'd gone through an adjournment of this summary motion that was against me, and they'd filed a motion for protection order because I was bringing up a securitization uh, argument. And, and keep in mind, I've talked about this in the past. It's all about the response too. When they start, like in my case, they'll bring an extra law firm to start messing with me. I'll know I'm onto something. And so today was cool because all the arguments that they make that sounded cool. And by the way, they're banking on the judge going, well, I guess you're right. This judge read my stuff. That's one of those judges I talk about in my video, why judges do what they do, that read your stuff. I, he, I don't like to kiss butt, but I said to him, before I made an argument, I said, you are one of the top 1% judges that reads my stuff. And I guess I was kind of tickling him there and having him go my way, but it, the stuff comes exactly just like that on the other side, but I was sincere. I think he knew it too. Um, so if you went on my collectionstopper.com podcast plus, you will see all the work I did in, for UHG. There's an answer, there's a counterclaim, all based on this case that I had on the screen for you. Really cool how I broke it down. That stuff doesn't go away. They cannot come at you or your client without that stuff. It's, it's quite unusual because again, as I've said many times, you've probably heard me say in my videos, how to fight a debt collection lawsuit. It's a nine or 10. They know they're bringing shit, but nobody cares because nine out of 10 is gonna get defaulted, etc. And we live in that one 10%. I want that to expand obviously. So that's why they add shit stuff to a shit, already a shit sandwich. I'm only allowed to do four SHIT in one video. 
Um, so it's all about the assignments that don't exist. Expect the other side to kind of lie through their tuchus, uh in twitzel and pretzel logic that nobody can believe. Once in a while you'll have a judge go, well, sounds good to me, because there are like six other cases ahead of you. So you got to be strong. Go to collectionstopper.com and podcast. And my show notes and everything about UHG is right there. There will be a sample lawsuit, a sample uh, from several places. Uh, there's at least two. And then there's a sample counter complaint. There's a sample answer. There's a bunch of stuff. And you will learn that UHG is your your ATM because eventually the, the law firm is going to go, oh, Parker's not going away or you're not going away. And now as you get closer to a serious part of the case and you keep letting them know, my attorney fees are building up, I'll settle it today for X. And then they'll argue with you when you finally get to where you've done a ton of work where you'd asked them earlier, just don't make me do the work. So you got to be strong, man. And uh, these are good cases. <laughs> I used to jokingly so, say, oh yeah, UHG is my in-ground, my new in-ground pool, but I don't have enough room for a pool. But they do such crazy things on this 9 out of 10 theory. As I said before, the, the uh, CFPB has gone after them for doing exactly what I'm telling you, deceiving consumers and to, actually in some cases deceiving their own law firms or going with law firms that know what they're up to and the law firms are like, okay, we'll do it anyway. It's a big mishmash and they are really, they have them, themselves to blame. Understand that with securitization of these personal loans, it's all written. So you'll go online, you'll get that loan. It's immediately placed in a trust. The whole thing is funded by an equity fund equity so that the money is available to lend to you that is then sold in the trust so the originator of the loan let's say it's lending club gets 80 cents on its dollar back now in this case JTM one of several entities trusts that are owning this kind of personal loan then takes your check every month through the servicing arm which is probably the originator or the servicer of the originator. It's not as complicated as it sounds. So the JTM trust sits there getting a check uh, and hopes that you won't default and overcomes the 80, 80 cents on the dollar that it's given uh, the original creditor, which is usually web bank. Inevitably, these things default, which there's a plan there too. So then they sell it again and try to get their money back. Then while this thing has been passed around a couple of times and people have profited, they then give it, sell it to UHG. What's the problem with that? And why you are going to go all in and hard on this case? There is no truth that JTM ever owned the debt and if it did, it never sent it anywhere close to UHG because you'll see all these other entities got a piece and bought it. The, the whole system, as I was talking about the secure trust part of this and having the originator sell them the debt, so it comes off the originator's bottom line, so then they're eligible for more money to borrow more money from somewhere else or from another equity fund. So the originator is always trying to get its debts off its books, get a better credit rating. The trust is there to take a cheap loan to hope that you don't default so it can get money going to it. There's a servicer in between all that servicing the debt. There are frequently sales from one trust to another passing this thing around as part of the whole system. The securitization system, I usually talk to you in terms of how do I get a creditor to eat this? to walk away from the whole debt because it's next to impossible. But with securitization, you can show the original credit, JP Morgan, Citibank, is in the same 
complex. There's less tentacles, and usually the trust is something that is a lot more intelligently done and careful because, for example, Citibank is heavily regulated and they're a stock-based production company, meaning they don't do anything without not violating the SEC and letting their shareholders know what's going on. These, by example, the web banks and lending club and all this, they're not so as regulated. So they're selling and spinning off your debt all over the place, whereas that's not such an easy thing to do. But somebody like Citibank wants to share in the ability to send a debt to a secure trust so they can clean up their bottom line and then go after the Fed, not go after them, but get a decent, that's where they get their money from. They're not getting money from equity sources like your personal loans from Lending Corp or Web Bank. They're getting their money the old fashioned way, which is from stockholders, from debts, and from the Fed, who then in turn, unfortunately for them, heavily regulate them. So that's conceptually securitization in both a fintech world and a serious, true creditor world. They both have to go through trusts. UHG or United Holding Group has centered its focus on the unregulated. Think about that. When you hear unregulated, you know no one's watching and the unregulated world generally of these online personal loans. And that's why stuff gets spinned off and frankly lied about and turning the collectors into pretzel collectors. Because by the time it gets to the lawsuit part, so many people have had a piece of it, still have a piece of it, or don't know if they have a piece of it. They just make stuff up. I, that's the best way I can put it. So these cases, when you have a UHG one LLC or UHG case or United Holding Group, it's a walk in the park. By virtue of the crazy status before it got to the law firm, it's already an indefensible mess. The truth actually hurts them. Lies, you, you just can't cover stuff up, but they have that umbrella protection, this radar of the 9 out of 10. We, you and I, get educated more and more, and we're going to bring that 9 out of 10 that default down to 8 out of 10 and protect people, down to 7 out of 10. Things right now are all based on this false securitization logic, and people, law firms, collectors are getting away with a lot of stuff through companies when I say getting away with stuff, I'm not alleging anybody doing anything wrong. Just see the paperwork. And UHG is one of those collectors that operates on a nod and a wink and operates with pretzel collectors, the CFPB, if even noticed, uh, irregularities. So with UHG, who are, who are they? Who knows? Even their lawsuits don't make sense as to who is the original creditor they claim gave them the debt and sometimes without even telling you about the very entities involved in the chain of title that later on in their paperwork they will agree yeah maybe they were part of it. it again it's oh what tangle webs we weave when we practice to, to deceive. They have a lot of practice here. Um, you'll do fine with these cases. There's tons of work on my collectionstopper.com website. Just look for the UHG section. I'll make it just a section for that. Also, a lot of good work can occur the first time the law firm for UHG contacts you. And they'll send you a letter saying, hey, look, you owe 10 grand, just pay us 1500. It'll be that low because they know uh, the prospects. Uh, it's just gravy. Any money they get is gravy. Maybe you want to go that way. I wouldn't because possibly down the road the real owners could show up if the economy goes bad and that becomes a niche for somebody else. All these lawsuits, millions of them where people have been sued by frankly the non-owners, 
there's a gap there of people that actually own the debt, but they haven't spoken up because it crashes the whole securitization system. So there's virtue in not paying someone that claims to own the debt and you're protecting yourself because until you get a solid chain of title, you are exposed. In this case, there's at least five owners that could be coming after you, technically, possibly, but unlikely. And again, if you settle these cases, make them write down, you're completely protected. Um, there's a number of ways to make sure that release says you're, no one's coming after you again. And to their protection, they'll write into the release, we are the true owners of this debt. So that'll protect you. And then you'll have, on the worst case scenario, you could have contribution or a counterclaim against UHG if one of these weird entities did show up and say, where's our money after you settled with UHG? That's a very real possibility. I believe in the future that will be somebody's niche. Settled cases that have gone away, the real owners will be showing up. I think it's out there. There's a very, un uh, maybe someone's listening is now going, wow, that's a great idea. I'm going to start representing trusts that really still own the debt, own the debt that somebody settled with. I hope some of this makes sense, but I hope you will look at UHG as your ATM only by virtue of the fact that they set up the machine for you. They give you their four digit code number. And then they say, look, take the money because we just gave you all the proof you want that we don't own this debt as we're suing you because we're claiming we do. And now you have the right to counterclaim. Brian Parker, again, hopefully you got something out of this. Who is UHG. I got tons of videos there on securitization, on defending yourself with a debt collection lawsuit. And when you get one of these letters, as I said, prior to being sued, because you're going to be, if you get one of those letters generally, my client did in this uh, Weltman Weinberg one night, I've given you as a sample. You will see a great video I created called Validation of Dispute Letters tells you every way that you can use federal law to protect yourself or set these guys up when they illegally come after you. It's, I've given you free stuff and I want it to be a one-stop shopping destination to help yourself. I'm always there to help you. Either you hire me or I can give you a couple of minutes of my time. Um, I've got a good one coming up on what's called solo suits. That's the new area where people are representing themselves through this. Actually, a pretty good idea as far as stopping defaults with one critical major flaw. If you're going to do this stuff yourself and you go to solo suit, which is your right, I am going to show you in one of my videos, there's one major flaw that solo suit's not telling you. It may be a class action as I'm saying this, and I want there to be access to everybody helping themselves. But I'm going to do a video on what they're missing. And I hope they see my video and correct it for all you folks that are spending a lot of money trying to represent yourself. Um, Brian Parker here. That's a low suit video is coming soon for your help. Uh, I'm who is UHG and all the different entities collectionstopper.com, go there for my show notes and all the documents on this and other cases and other videos. I just want to help. Hopefully I am helping you. And here I am ensconced in Michigan, awaiting the destruction of my house, my office back in Florida, but that's life. I got insurance. Uh, and I have electricity now because we won't have electricity down there very soon. Thank you. I'm whining. I apologize. Uh, thank you for your time and listening to this. I hope I've helped you and I kept it under 30 today. Thank you.